Well, a restaurant in China recently had to apologize for placing scales at the entrance to their establishment and encouraging customers to weigh themselves to determine what they could order in food. The Chuyan Fried Beef location in Changsha, Hunan, said that the scales in the menu suggestions were put in place as a response to President Xi Jinping's call for the country to reduce food waste. Two scales were placed at the entrance to the eatery. Customers were encouraged to weigh themselves and then follow a guide placed for the scales offering food selections based on your weight. <laughs> well, if you ask me, they probably don't know the old American saying, if the shoe fits, you can probably order whatever you want. Well, customers took to social media complaining this was fat shaming. And apparently the restaurant's decision was just Wong on so many levels. Uh, <laughs> By the way, do you know how you weigh an elephant? No. Well, pretty much like you would weigh a human, but it's just done on a larger scale. Uh, anyway, the restaurant said online, quote, our intention was to advocate not wasting food and for people to order in a healthy way, end quote. I think if they had suggested a low-carb, high-fiber meal, the guidance would have just been absolutely riceless. <laughs> yeah, riceless. You got, got that, right? <laughs> yeah. Trey's well, still working on it. Tan Yan, the president of the Chuyan fried beef chain, said that the scales would remain in place, but that it would be made clear that customers are in no way required to use them. Now, before we move on, this reminded me of the time that a friend showed me an impressive model of Mount Everest that he had just built. I asked him if it was to scale. And he said, no, please just look at it. <laughs> wow. Scale. Yeah, like flying. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, once upon a time in a park in Oakland, California, there lived a wild turkey that local folks named Gerald the Turkey. Coincidentally, my nickname for Jerry Nadler is the same. Well, <laughs> Everyone loved Gerald, that is, until, as often happens with people, mating season arrived and he got a little too much wild turkey in himself. Gerald went into a foul mood. You might say he was poultry in commotion. Uh, like poetry in motion. Hey, you got it, there you go. Well, he was attacking people, running just all over the place, ruining the park for everyone, like all those other Antifa turkeys. <laughs> Well, a wildlife officer tried to trap Gerald, but eventually threw in the towel. The park's rose garden had to be shut down for public safety. Gerald has calmed down a little since mating season passed, but the city is still trying to catch and relocate him. I'd look for him in their hay bales because, you know that old song, Turkey in the Straw? But that's just me. <laughs> Tell you what, if he's still making trouble in November, you give me a call. I got a solution that involves one part cornbread stuffing and one part cranberry sauce and uh -huh. one part gobbling him up. <laughs> yum, yeah. Yum. And by the way, do you know what you get when you cross an octopus with a turkey? Mm. Enough drumsticks for Thanksgiving. That's what you get. <laughs> hmm. All right. Well, there are two parks over in Tokyo, Japan. They're attracting attention for their new public restrooms. You see, they're, they were designed with transparent walls. The restrooms are part of the Nippon Foundation's Tokyo Toilet Project. They were installed to help people quickly determine if they're clean and if they're currently occupied. That's one way to yeah. do it. Now, there are two things that we worry about when entering a public restroom in the park. Uh, the project website said this. The two things we worry about, cleanliness and whether anyone is inside. I'd like to add a third. Are the walls clear and can people see me taking care of business? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, the Japanese designers took not my number three into account along with number one and number two. <laughs> see what I did there? Yeah, huh? that was slick. Yeah, I thought so. Well, you would if the restroom was transparent. So thankfully, the walls change from transparent to frosted opaque when the door is activated. And their website states, at night, the facility lights up the park like a beautiful lantern. And who doesn't want to use a bathroom that everyone is drawn to at night? <laughs> and by the way, if you forget to lock the door, 
you cannot tell from the inside that the walls remain clear on the outside. Oh. Excuse me, Kev. Uh, yeah. Were those balloons in the bathrooms? Uh, you know, I don't know, Trey, why? Because um, if they were, then we'd know somebody is celebrating a birthday <laughs> potty. <laughs> oh, birthday terrible. potty. Oh, my goodness. Well, uh, <laughs> are you, um, now, seriously, Governor, yep. did you read about the guy that was standing on a commode behind a stall door hiding from the police? No. Yeah, they arrested him for being high on pot. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> Guys, both of you need to brush up on your jokes. I'm serious. But seriously, folks, do you know why police in North Dakota couldn't catch a man that stole toilets from their headquarters? I have no idea. I'll tell you why, because they had nothing to go on. Oh! Hey, let's finish this story. In fact, let's finish this show. <laughs> Each of the Tokyo parks were given a clear building that includes a men's toilet, a women's toilet, and a mixed-use toilet. You know, I always thought that every toilet was a mixed-use toilet, but yeah. what do I know? Well, I hope we stick with the good old ordinary wall ones here at home. Me too. You bet. Yeah. Well, a Hawaiian man named Doug Falter was surfing when his surfboard leash broke and his board was pulled out to sea. Now, Doug said that he was kind of bummed that he'd never see ever his beloved board again. Mm. Dude, that board was so gnarly, I imagine him saying. And then two years later, cowabunga! He got a message that his surfboard had turned up 5,200 miles away in the Philippines. You know, it's always in the last place you'd look, right? Mm -hmm. Well, a fisherman found it and sold it to a man who tracked Doug down through the manufacturer to find out how the board had gone on such a long surf and safari. Yeah. Well, excuse me, Governor, but did you ever hear about the medieval surfing king that needed to relax when he discovered 20 traitors. Mm -mm. Now, he decided to let half go and just hang 10. Oh, Keith. Hang 10. That joke was so bad, it was literally a wipeout. Uh, you yep. just talked to me right there. <laughs> now, a lot of people don't know this, but it's always been my ambition to be a champion surfer. But yep. now, at my age, it's just a pipe dream. Yep. Mm. And if I surf dressed like this, people would think I somehow completely misunderstood the meaning of wetsuit. Mm. Yeah. By the way, this surf story has a good vibrations ending. The new owner is a teacher, and there are no local surfing stores. So Doug is raising money to send him surfboard wax and other supplies so he and all of his students can learn how to surf. Here's my advice. Forget the wax. Just send them a stronger surfboard leash. That's what they're going to need. <laughs> there you go. Well, I don't think there's any one of us who looks forward to a trip to the DMV. Sometimes it can feel like you're there for hours on end. But the reward, that renewed license, is always the triumph. But a lady named Jade Dodd had the DMV experience of all time. Dodd admitted the DMV lady was a bit skeptical about her license needing an update at first. But when she saw the photo that Dodd had received on her new license that had been mailed to her, she went to get the manager. Because you see, in place of Jade Dodd smiling in the picture, there was a photo of a chair. I'll tell you what happened. And frankly, if that happened to me, I sure wouldn't take it sitting down, that's yeah. for sure. Well, the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security said that the chair ended up in the license as Jay Dodd because it was the last photo taken and saved to Dodd's computer file. That's what happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, you know, Governor, <clears throat> before I got into music, you know, like a couple of years ago, mm. um, I was speaking to someone at a call center I worked at. He got really mad, and they asked me to speak to someone higher up. So you know what I did? No. I got up on a chair... And I started speaking some more. It, it didn't work. Yep, you were higher up. Yeah, I get I, it. Uh, I memories, get it. memories. Higher. You know, Governor, way back when I was single, I remember trying to date a gal that didn't like me. And it was a lot like going to the DMV. How was that, Keith? Well, I got the runaround all day, got frustrated. And when she finally did call my number, I was just glad it was over. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> hey, Keith, I only have one piece of advice for you, Trey, and everyone watching about the DMV. Never get stuck behind the devil in line at the DMV. And you know why? Why? Because the devil can take many forms. Oh, yeah. 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 I don't think they like that. Oh, so I've heard. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, back to Ms. Dodd and the chair impersonating her. 
Dodd said there was some laughter over it. She said she was at work Friday and her boss pointed to a chair and said, oh, I thought that was you, so I waved at it this morning. Anyway, she posted the photo on Facebook on August the 6th and it's been viewed by thousands and turned into several memes. Dodd finally received her new license on Monday and it's without the chair being on it. Well, before we leave, I want to acknowledge that it has been a hot summer, especially for our friends in Arizona recently. It may be a dry heat, but look what it did to this ice cream truck. Yep. Mm. And the other optical illusion seems to be happening this summer is pets beginning to melt. You don't believe me? Just take a look at this poor dog's face. <laughs> I mean, talk about being down in the mouth. And then this cat is turning into one long piece of fur. Yeah? And then outdoors, it's still too hot. This squirrel has just given up. Mm. Mm. And even this pair of ducks are slowly dripping away. <laughs> well, we hope you're keeping cool during these dog days of August. And just like those two ducks in the heat, we gotta fly. But always remember, we read the news. <laughs> Wait, don't click that button. Well, unless it was the subscribe button, and then carry on. And while you're down there, hit that little notification bell too. Oh, and if you leave a like and a comment, I will personally give my dog Toby a treat. <laughs>